Okay, so here's the figure for our F10-1 question. And it's stating that we need to find the moment of inertia for this figure. We need to find the moment of, of inertia for this figure based upon the x-axis, which is our horizontal uh, axis. All right, so what's our first step? Struct a differentially small element. So here it will be a rectangular element that I've constructed. Now first let's determine what the lengths are. So over here we can say that this one, uh, like since this one could keep on changing, this should be our upon the y-axis. And then over here we don't know this length, but we do know the total length of this uh, figure, right? Which, which is one meter. And then we can we can say that this one is is our unknown, our unknown x. unknown x. So equally 1 minus our unknown will give us this length. Right? So we can say that the area of this uh, differentially small element, okay, the differentially small element, but our area for this is length multiplied by width, so it's 1 minus x, dy. There we go. So once we found the area, let's determine the centroid of the shape. Now we can determine the centroid based upon our uh, based upon uh, x and y. And accordingly, they have their uh, the centroids x squiggly and y squiggly. Right. Now, now for our for our y element. Since since we're basing it upon the x axis, it will always be protruding upwards. So like. Our figure will only appear and can only be measured in the y-axis. So that's why this will be y. Now for our x, it is the center of this, uh, the center of this uh, shape. So we can, it, if it draws a straight line, it's going to be there. So how do we determine that? We already know that, that the entire shape is encompassed by, uh, is encompassed by 1 minus x. So it's basically just 1 minus x divided by 2. So our next step is there. So now you see this formula earlier, but then we all already have our y value, which is the same as y. So, so by substituting that in, and our limits, is our, y, uh, our y limits are y equals 0 and y equals 1. Let me catch So over here we can we we can sub in those values. Y square and our DA that is given here already. Let's just put that in. Okay. Now over here we do not uh we do not want this x value here since it will ruin this uh th this basic integration. So we need something to substitute into x that will make it all in terms of y. So we do have that over here. Our y cube equals x over here. Let's uh, rearrange our y cube equals x squared to get it in terms of x. So we basically root both sides. So we can get the square root of uh, y cube equals x. So using this, we can substitute it in here to make it more uniform. Okay. Y square one minus y to the power of two over three. And then let's just let's just uh, distribute our y square. So will become y square equals, no, y square, sorry, y square multiplied by 1's y square minus, now over here, uh, just a reminder in case you'll forget how to, uh, how to, how to deal with uh, multiplication of exponents. If they have the same base, all right, 
If they have the same base and then they multiply with one another, its exponents will add. And that's all you need to remember. So, so in case of this, we have we have R2 plus, since it's multiplication, 2 by 3. So that one, like just using LCM. Six seven. And actually, there's a mistake. Yeah, actually, this one. This one is actually three over two. My bad. Because you see, it's the square root of my cube. My bad. There makes more sense. Okay. So this one should should have actually been. Uh, the square. There we go. So for five, six, seven, so it will become seven over two. Dy. All right. So here we'll do our integration. Let's equal. Or equals to brackets. So why uh, for a basic integration? Just just in case you all forgot. So it's n plus one all over n plus one. There we go. So our n here being our exponent value, which is two. So accordingly, it will just be y cube over three minus uh, seven over two plus one, that is, we can, we can have it here as well, seven over two plus one, two, two, which is nine over two. So we got y nine over two over nine over two. For, for this nine over two, you can simply have it as a reciprocal. Uh, another way of writing that is like this. Can be written as 2 over 9. Y 9 over 2. There we go. So actually, let's write it that way. So it's much more uh, easier to look at. So we got 2 over 9. Y 9 over 2. There we go. Now we basically substitute 1. We substitute this value first into our uh, y variables, and then we'll substitute, uh, and then we'll subtract that with a substitution of 0. But since 0, anything that's multiplied to 0 is going to be 0, so we're going to discard our second term. So we're, so we're just going to take note of this 1, of the 1 substitution, and then it doesn't matter either way because anything that is uh, for the exponents, anything and any base that's multiplied, uh, any exponent that's multiplied with a base of one will always be one. So, so these exponents don't really matter. So, like what we're left with is, so this will all become one, all become one. So we're left with one over three. And 2 over 9. So if you write that final uh, 2 over 9, which is simply equal to 0 0.1111. Dot, 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 dot. Alright? So we could say that our i of x can be also written in this. Uh, Let's write it in the scientific notation, shall we? Meter, four, four. Meter, since it's meter. And that is our final answer.